Are you ready to say goodbye to the constant ups and downs of the artist income roller coaster? Whether you're a full-time artist who wants to increase and stabilize your income, a part-time musician who wants to go full-time, or a hobbyist who needs to fund your passion projects, this podcast will equip you with the tools, resources, and inspiration to make it happen. My name is Bree Noble. I'm a musician, best-selling author, and educator whose mission is to help musicians like you to increase the income you're already making and tap into new income streams so you can create a more diverse, stable, reliable income from music and finally ditch the starving artist mentality. Now let's dive into The Profitable Musician Show. Hello and welcome to the podcast. My name is Bree Noble and I am truly thrilled. I always say I'm excited every single time. So I'm changing this because I really am over the moon excited to be talking with my friend Audrey Callahan here because this is kind of a follow-up episode. I had her on the podcast. Uh, I just looked it up. It was 2016, which is the second year of the Female Entrepreneur Musician podcast, episode number 52, if you want to go back and check that out. Um, Obviously, my life, her life all looked very different in 2016, but that's what makes this so interesting, right? To have this follow-up. So, and I also had her on my summit in 2018. Um, So I'm just really excited to be doing this interview and catching up with all that has changed and blossomed, especially recently in her career since then. I know that she is going to be able to give you guys a lot of really good pointers Uh, for artists on making income and maybe things that she decided to put aside and move on to different things because she had different opportunities. And so it'll be really great to go through her whole story. Um, But before we get into that, just in case you haven't listened to episode number 52. Um, Audrey, I'd love to have you give a background on like how you got into music, what you have done, what your music journey has been kind of up to when we did our last episode together and then we can explore from there. Definitely. Yeah. So I, we're talking a little before about how being on that episode was such a moment for me because I felt like your podcast was like this next step. And I had become this like grown up singer songwriter that had earned the right to be on this esteemed. They were telling me that it was only two years in, but I mean, you've had your stuff together for years and years and years before that. So it just all felt, um, very awesome to be on your podcast way back then. And yeah, so as far as my start, I've been singing my whole life ever since I was young. If my um, mom or dad ever asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up, I would always emphatically say a rock star. And I even dressed up as a rock star, not a pop star, like a rock star with like the hair and everything for Halloween. And she would do little interviews with us, asking us questions like that. And I just have always loved singing and My dad is a phenomenal musician. He's a scientist by day, musician by night. He's always been in bands and he's always had a dedicated music room in all of the houses we've had growing up. And he would always bring me into the music room and I would sing a lot of the songs that he personally couldn't sing, like The Journey and Queen and all these big Led Zeppelin notes. And so I kind of took over that role for him. So I started expanding my range and my music knowledge from a very young age. And then I myself discovered, you know, the Whitney's and the Mariah's and my mom is Hispanic. So I definitely have Hispanic influence in there in terms of music. And I always knew I wanted to be a pop star when I grew up, but somewhere along the way, you know, things happen and you get scared off your path and you settle into a plan B career. So I definitely went that route too and had a totally different career as a web developer. Um, But I never lost sight of music and I was able to come full circle eventually, but yeah. That was my yeah, I had forgotten <laughs> about that, the whole design career. And I think you yeah. were still doing that when I had you on the podcast, you and your mm-hmm. husband kind of ran a design company. Yes, that was my full-time job for nine years. And I worked it very diligently from nine to five. And then I only did my music after. Wow. Was wow. done, And I did that for that entire time trying to make it take off. I mean, there was, a, there was half of that. I gave up on music altogether and just did it for fun. But then the latter half is when I really started working in the music business and it eventually took over. But yeah, I loved web development. It was great, but it was just always nagging at me at the back of my head. If I 
could make a successful web business. Why couldn't I do that with my main skill, which is music? I mean, here I was, my teachers told me in school that I shouldn't start a business. It's too hard in the web development industry. There's all these DIY websites, like all this stuff. And we decided not to listen. And in that business, we hit six figures by year two. We had office space, employees, all this stuff. And I was sitting there just looking at everything I'd built and just kind of kicking myself thinking I need to do this for music. And so mm. that's when I made, I, I made the switch, but I had to go through that to learn business systems and operations and sales and marketing. And I learned so much in that business that carried over to music. Yeah. I love that perspective. Cause it's true. If you can practice it in another business and then mm-hmm. move it over to music, you're going to be much more successful, much quicker because you don't have to learn all those lessons. Right. And then I was able to apply it in a business that didn't feel so personal. I feel like with music, it's very personal. And if you get rejected, it's like a personal rejection as as opposed to just a business deal. Um, And that's things, you know, I'm still dealing with today. So, (laughs) yeah, I mean, that's true. You, you get, you get that whole experience of lots of people saying no to you and, you know, Mm -hmm. trying to tweak your marketing to figure out why people aren't paying attention and all those things that you can get out of the way before you start working on music. Well, I know back then um, we had talked on the podcast, kind of your first big thing that you got into with music was doing session work and you were doing a lot of it online as well. You were also, I think, performing. Are you still in San Diego area, by the way? I am. We finally moved back. We stopped RVing. We settled down (laughs) and we bought a place out here. Yeah. San Diego. Cool. So yeah, we were, you were in San Diego last time I talked to you and then and you were performing and then you were doing a lot of um, online session work. I'm guessing that it's changed a lot since then, it because has. of the, especially because of the pandemic. Uh, I got to say, like, you're the one that got me on to air gigs way back then. And then nice. now I've developed a relationship with them. I've had them on the podcast. I recommend I love that. all the people I've written for their blog. Like during the pandemic, they were doing a lot of uh, blog stuff to help musicians. And I wrote stuff for their blog. And so that was kind of fun. Yeah. Um, but how do you feel like the, the session world has changed since then? Oh, big time back then. I remember being so floored and just yelling it from the rooftops about how cool it was and how easy it was. But I think a lot of platforms have popped up since then. And probably a lot of people have heard me yelling it from the rooftops. And so a lot of people signed up. But I'm always from the mentality that I love to share everything I know. I don't believe in a scarcity mindset and everything will happen in in its own time. And I, I think there's enough for everybody to go around. But Having said that, yes, it has it hasn't been as active as back then. I feel like um it's very saturated now. So now I find myself if I'm low on session work needing to boost my post or do an ad or something like that, or you know, before I could just sit around and get them, now I need to look for them a little bit more. I have found an interesting niche in uh cheerleading music. So I've kind what? of gotten, yeah, so random. Uh, cheerleading competitions, you know, that, uh, they do it at a college level, toddler, high school, all throughout. It's kind of a big deal. There's Netflix documentaries. Some of the teams I work with do the music for the teams that are on the Netflix documentaries. I've been flown around the country to do the type of work. It, it, it's really random. The, the cheer industry found me through one avenue, I think just Googling a session vocalist and found my website. And then separately, a different cheer company found me on Spotify. One of my songs had gone kind of viral and then it got on his Spotify discover something. And he called me right then and there. I was like, is this you on the radio on Spotify? I was like, yeah, that's me. He's like, I do cheerleading music. Have you heard of that? I'm like, I just found out about it. And so I'm kind of like the voice of cheer right now. And that's what has kept me afloat. Um, when air gigs started to get less. (laughs) Wow. That's really cool. And, and I find too, like, I don't do a lot of session work. I do them when they come along, but I find that like, once someone finds you, they tend to come back to you again and again, because they know you're reliable. They like your voice. They know your voice, how it sounds with the kind of writing that they do. And so a lot of times, mostly I'm just like any things that I do throughout the year are for like two people, you know? Yeah, (laughs) totally. Yeah. And then I do get the idea though, that, you know, they may want to switch it up and and not have the same singer on all five of their albums, you know, maybe try, try different stuff, but it is nice to get that repeat business for sure. Awesome. So another thing I just remembered from the episode that we did was that you had something go viral on YouTube because 
you met some people on a, like some influencers on a cruise or something like that, right. right? Oh my gosh, flashback. Yes, the world of virality has changed so much. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, back then that was my first viral moment. I've had many since, which has been pretty cool. Thanks to TikTok. But um, yeah, I found that girl again on TikTok. I was thinking of doing like a follow-up years later of like duetting her in something. So thanks for the reminder. Um, but yes, that song is still one of my most played. It's the one that the YouTubers found on the cruise and and vlogged about. Um, but yeah, now thanks to TikTok, a few others have had their moment in the spotlight. And so, yeah, going viral is definitely helpful. Yes, yes, definitely. Um, okay. So I want to get into TikTok big time, but let's, let's kind of catch everybody up on what happened, what you did in your music career between like, say 2016 and maybe 2022 or, you know, until, until TikTok really started going crazy for you. Yeah, I feel like I floundered quite a bit. I was hiding in my studio. I was doing session work. So I was happy about that. I was making money, but I still longed for my own music to get out there. And I've been on YouTube since 2000, I think nine, I uploaded my first video. And the only thing that happened between then and say 2022 was maybe those girls who found me on the cruise, but that was it. Mm -hmm. And and it, it, I just felt like I was spinning my wheels and it was hard to get my own music out there. And I kind of had a sour taste in my mouth about performing live because I only really could get hired for covers and I didn't really want to get back into the cover world. So I kind of disappeared in the studio, which I guess was needed looking back and just started writing a lot. And mm-hmm. um, a big part of that, I mean, before TikTok took off, that's where I started writing is I would look around on TikTok and I would find people who are like, oh, look at this beat. And so there'd be producers posting their beats on there. And I'm like, let me just do some exercises and and develop my writing skills. And so I started just posting um, original stuff on there. I started out with covers and it was taking me nowhere. Same as YouTube taking me nowhere. And I was just like, forget this. Like my ultimate passion is to get my own message out there. So no more covers. And I stuck to doing originals when I first got on TikTok in 2020 I morphed into the originals. And then that's when things started taking off more when people got to know me and what I had to say in my particular message. And now my song catalog was growing because I hadn't really released a lot of music up until then. I had I always considered myself um, someone who could write songs, but I don't know, donning the term songwriter and feeling confident, even selling my writing skills on air gigs, people would want to hire me for songwriting. And I feel nervous about it. Mm -hmm. Fast forward to today where I started doing it so much because of the help of TikTok that now it's a service that I do offer and have a lot of confidence in and get pretty much no revisions and people love it. Mm -hmm. And, and it was just stepping into it and really owning it and doing it a lot. Um, that really helped me come out of my shell. So I'd say that was just a lot of discovery for me from when we last talked to now. Um, I mean, there's more to get into, but I mean, I have a show of original music that I'm putting together, which is in the past that I've been like, no one would hire me for originals, but I've just grown a lot and and things are happening because I decided they could happen. And I just started doing them regardless of if the numbers or the money was showing up yet. Yeah. I mean, it seems like what TikTok really did for you in the beginning is it gave you the confidence to be you, Yeah, you know, and that, that is a great thing. Like all the things that people say about TikTok, but that is something that I have seen happen with many artists of people just Mm -hmm. saying like, there is a niche for me. There are people that like my music. They like me for me. They want to know like what's going on in my life and that kind of thing. And I think that's what's great about TikTok. Do you think that the pandemic played a role? Like, do you think that that because you couldn't go out and perform or, you know, it just it, it had you focus more on writing and then like really getting into TikTok? Um, yes. I mean, I've been kind of a homebody for a while. I live out on a ranch in the middle of nowhere and and I don't think I was performing out much at that time, but it did give me a sense of real connection. I feel like when I was posting on YouTube, I was just blasting it into an empty void and I never really heard from people. Um, it just wasn't a quick acting. I may get a comment on something I posted months ago, but it's one comment. It was just, I don't know. It just wasn't as fulfilling and connection building for me, but then I saw the quick format um stuff that I was posting on TikTok that it was instantly like you know 
tens of twenties of thirties of people would start and it's actual conversations and even just watching people, how authentic they are. I think on YouTube, it was more polished Mm -hmm. and I was, I was doing, I was having like a green screen background. It was taking me forever doing these full covers, like editing my butt off and like, ah, for what, to what end? Um, But with this, you can just put up your phone and sing. And I feel like that was a, yeah, it was a big pandemic. Pandemic was a big push in that direction because nobody could see each other. But now we have this peek into their homes and people in their closets or best bedrooms, just trying to connect with someone. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. Now, one thing that TikTok really brought out that I think got people moving and, and doing stuff that was they wouldn't have done maybe is like the ability to duet. And yes. I've seen you do quite a bit of, of duetting. Is that kind of where you got started or were you posting your own stuff first or a combo of both of those things? I started off duetting. So I started off with finding the people who posted beats and I would duet their beats and write something to it. And then um, I started duetting other artists where I like their songs, underground artists, not like these big people that we all know. That's one thing about TikTok is they love the underground. They they almost don't want celebrities on there because they're like, you have your fame, like leave right. this to the indie artists. So they're so welcoming to indie artists and they love discovering. So if I duet someone, I can kind of tell when a song is going to pop off. And so if I duet someone and they're at like not that many views, and then their video pops off. Now I come up with them too. And I, you know, I, I don't do it based on trends. That's the other thing is I make sure it's related to my brand and my, my content, what I like to talk about. Um, but yeah, one of my favorite things is to do it people either with harmonies or now you'll see a trend where they do open verse challenges. So mm-hmm. I'll take a song where, you know, it relates to my brand always. It has to, um, and I'll do at them. And then another thing that has actually taken off more than anything for me is my rewrites. So I'll take a song and I'll rewrite it with positive lyrics. <laughs> so it'll be a song talking about, I don't know, materialism, sex, things like that. And I'll turn it into like crystals and sage and meditating. <laughs> and people seem to really like that. And um, I discovered a new skill. I guess I can rap. <laughs> so I actually have a song out where it's all rapping. I don't even sing on the song at all. And I'm like, what is life <laughs> that I'm now a rapper, I guess. And People love it. They're like, what is this? Like, she's got she's got flows and she's white and she's talking about some positive shit. Like, I can get behind this. I'm like, okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's just um just doing something new and fresh and and putting a spin on things and being entertaining. <laughs> People Yeah, and that. I've I've heard you mention a couple of times it has to fit with my brand. So did you sit yes. down beforehand and were like, okay, this is what I want to, you know, be as a brand online, or did you just kind of like be like, this is who I am and this is what I want, you know, this is what I feel comfortable with. And then it just evolved or was it a little more calculated than that? It evolved. When I started writing to the beats, I've always talked about positive things, but um, I never, I coined myself now as a high vibe artist, which I never did before. Before, when I was posting YouTube covers, I would sing, you know, stuff I would do with my dad sometimes, like like rock and Led Zeppelin. And like, you know, if it had high notes, I was trying it and singing mm-hmm. it to like, you know, but now it's not based on that at all. It's based on the content. And I think that started because when I was writing, I realized what was coming out of me naturally. And then because I was doing that, I saw the comments. And so people would then be, you know, like, I'm going through a breakup. Like, can you help me? And then I would do it that and write something healing for that person. And all of a sudden I became like the healing, positive songwriter. So I just really honed in on that um, because it's what I like to do. So now it then became weird if someone requested me, hey, can you do this one song? And it had maybe some cussing in it or I don't know, it just wasn't in alignment. I instantly felt a disconnect. Whereas before I may have done something like that because I was just so open, but because I was just niche for so long in my own world with no one watching, Um, When they did start to watch, I had already been in that niche for so long that it just made sense to just stay there. And I felt the disconnect, like I said, if I tried to do anything else. Yeah. And that's good because I'm sure your audience would also feel the disconnect if you did that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's very cool. So I know you had, well, you said you've had several viral moments on TikTok. Why don't you outline a few of those? Like, you know, what, what were they and, and how did they happen? Yeah. So the I'll start with the highest one. (laughs) Um, The highest one is a little over 3 million views. And that one was a rewrite. And so I think there's like all these tips and tricks out there of what you can do to have viral videos on TikTok. But I think one of them is, is polarity. So the 
the song came out and it was about um, bashing her ex. It's the ABCD. I was going to say it's the ABCD one. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So she's, you know, F you and your mom and your dad and everybody. The whole song is F you. And I never want to place any judgment or say anything bad about the songs I rewrite. I get that we are a full spectrum, uh, you know, human beings are full spectrum. You've got to have the light, the dark. It's important to go through all the emotions. So sometimes you may feel like F you, but maybe you move further along, along the lines of healing and you get to my song where it's like, I know you did me wrong, but you know, I don't want to wishing you pure hell isn't good for my mental health. And so it, it took like a healing. If the same you know reached healing this is what the song would be about and so people really like that because they were hurting they were going through divorces all these things and so they loved being able to sing a healing version of it to help them get through it and so that one went bonkers and it still is it keeps getting picked up here and there and um and and i was able to clear a license for it through easy cover song and um so now it's on spotify and itunes and and all that so that one. And then the next one that went viral, I was really proud of because it was one of my own. It was mm -hmm. one of my little uh, practices that I did where I saw these guys playing saxophone. And so, you know, how I always, you know, duet producers who are doing beats. But these guys made like a saxophone beat and it was the coolest thing ever. And someone had commented, imagine someone singing to this. And I was like, oh, well, 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 let's see. And so I did it and I hit record and I'm big into affirmations. And I was like, what if I just sing my affirmations to this beat? Like, what would that sound like? And so then it, I just like went for it and sang all these affirmations and people loved it. And that song mm. went bonkers. And I ended up reaching out to these guys who are big in their own right. They're touring all over the place. And um, they're like, absolutely, let's release a song together. It's um, at almost a million streams on Spotify. It's millions of views on on TikTok, thousands of duets, like 10,000 plus, which duets is just people either lip syncing it or or dancing along to it or um, so that one was huge. And I ended up doing more songs with them. And the next song I did with them ended up winning a San Diego Music Award. And now we're on our third song together. And it's just this domino effect of these strangers I've never knew who live all the way in Massachusetts and me over here in California coming together, uh, you know, for the for the good of all the people who are into the songs. So, yeah, that's so cool. How do you <laughs> how do you find these like opportunities or duets or things like that? I mean, are you spending hours and hours scrolling TikTok every day? Um, I think curating your feed is the best bet. Um, I think actually the opposite. If you spend hours on TikTok looking at cat videos, that's all you're going to see in your feed. And it's going to take you a long time to see what you need. But if you dedicate, you know, half an hour a day, skip past. If you want to see cat videos, start a different account. <laughs> Look at cat right. videos over there. <laughs> but on my music account, then um, I'm, I'm always looking at producers posting beats and open verse challenges and things like that. And so it knows what I'm looking for and looking at. That. And so it just shows me things. I'm like, oh, I like that. And so then I have a Trello board that's also on my phone. And so when I see something, then I grab the link and I throw it in my board. And so my board is like this long. Mm -hmm. So when it comes time for me to come do a TikTok, I sit down, I look at my board, what am I going to do? And at first I got kind of panicked wanting to do things on the spot. And that certainly does help if you're able to do, do at someone right away. But if not, my most viral one, the ABC, I released that like six months after that song came out. Mm -hmm. And it, I had put it, it was so long that I put it in a folder that said um, shelved. Like I was never going to go back to it. And then I was like, you know what? Let me just do this. Even though it's six months past its release date and everybody's tired of the song. And then there you go. So I'd say don't panic too much, you know, do what you can. And um, I just, yeah, I keep a running board so that I can stay on track. That's funny that you were almost not going to do it. And then it turns I know, out I know I took a screenshot of it because I never changed the the file link. I just kept working out of it in the shelved folder. And uh -huh. I was like, this thing was never going to come out. Look at the folder it's in. <laughs> wow. How long do you, would you say it takes you to do a TikTok like that? Is it, do you just do one take and you're done or? No, it takes me, <laughs> I want to say, I'm a bit of a perfectionist, so it may take me up to like three hours, maybe four if I'm not showered, you know, so like say I'm not ready for the day, I got done working out and then I sit down. I'm like, okay, now I need to write a new song to this thing. So then I write the song and then I actually, a little pro tip, I actually record the vocals and then I lip sync when I post mm. it. Cause I feel like it would take me even longer, at, you know, keep screwing up the words and, and, well, and your like vocals that. sound amazing. So you, you know, you're, you're recording them high quality. 
Yeah, right. Exactly. So I know a lot of people are on their phones and and that's fine too. That stuff goes viral, but I mean, I have the setup and my phone stuff has just never sounded that good. So I, yeah, I record the vocals here and then I write it and, um, and then I'll get ready and then I'll do the lighting and then, and then I'll hit play. And then, you know, like matching, matching up, I sing for real, but, um, it's so it, you know, it always looks real, but yeah. then I use the good audio. So yeah, I mean, the, and then, okay, you're done. And then you put it over here and then you line it all up and then you got to put the lyrics on it. And then you, you take it over to the platform and upload it. They do all the hashtags and they, like, you know, by the time it's all said oh, and yeah. done from when I'm like, let me sit down to it's all done. It's probably like four hours per TikTok. I believe so, it. Yeah. I believe it. And do you do you use those other places? Are you also posting them on Instagram and shorts and things? I like that? am. Yeah. I post them everywhere. Um, I did have one pop off on YouTube shorts. It got a few actually. One got like over six million views on shorts. Wow. This was before they were paying on shorts. And then another got like three million, another got a million. I know. Those are my voiceover stuff, though. Just as a joke, I did a voiceover challenge, which maybe you should never do jokes because then things that go viral aren't like, you know, uh-huh, then you're known for that. Yeah. <laughs> but I do. I would love to be a Disney character one day where I speak and sing in a di- so I voiceover is part of it. Um, but that's the one that popped off on YouTube. So nothing singing has popped off on YouTube, just my voiceover stuff. And then I feel, yeah, so the audience over my YouTube now is just so different. I feel like there's a lot of, I don't know, I get a lot of trolls over there. Mm. I never get negative comments on TikTok ever, but on I YouTube. That too. I don't know why YouTube and Twitter are like the places to get the mean. Comments. I know. What is up with that? Because then it makes you not want to go there and or hang out. Well, why don't they show it to people they know will like it? They're showing know. it to people that obviously won't. So it just it makes me a little sad because I I feel like maybe it's our generation, like because mm-hmm. you know the people on TikTok are generally skew younger. You know my kids yeah. are on TikTok. They're not hanging out. Well, they're in, they go on YouTube, but they never comment, and yeah. they certainly would never go on Twitter. So I'm just like, oh, it's probably all these Gen Xers being. Oh so no, old, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh gosh. Well, okay. So it basically sounds like this is now your full-time job Are you <laughs> getting, you know, paid enough through TikTok, through YouTube, through streaming, all of that stuff to say that it's actually paying for itself or is it a means to another end where you're getting paid? Um, I'd say it's a means to another. And um, there are ways where you could, um, you know, I've had a few brand deals come through that are nice, like they pay pretty decent. I got like 600 bucks once to put a logo in one of my videos. And then another brand sent me an iPad, which I use every time I do live performances. And so there's definite perks, but I haven't yet found a way or maybe I've not wanted to make it my full time job. So I haven't really tried. I do it as an outlet and for fun. And my goal is to eventually funnel it into Patreon, which I haven't been good at doing. Um, But I have a new block schedule up here and it has me going live on TikTok in the mornings and um, just starting to really consciously funnel that stuff. Um, But yeah, my main income right now is still session vocals. And um, I'm starting to do live performances again with my original music. I'm targeting the the corporate thing, like the personal development, like Tony Robbins, Gary V, like opening up for personal development seminars, stuff like that. That's cool. Yeah, I know that you um you took my friend Tiamo's class, and you've been yes. working on that, which is going to be so good. Yes, yes, it was it was a like. It was a really good, really good course, a wealth of knowledge. And although I do want to work speaking into my show, it's going to be a little different. It's a bit more um, theatrical, um, Mm -hmm. more uh, as if it was like a keynote musical or something. (laughs) That's cool. I think people love that. Yeah. (laughs) Wow. So uh, have you gotten, I think I've seen at least one or two, you've gotten just like people finding you on TikTok and like inviting you to do performances and stuff? Yes. So for that, it is really good. So um, I did, I got um, found on there through the ABC song that went viral. Um, A CEO of a large company um, found me because his daughter is into all the type of music that I do. And he loved that I was making things more positive because he hates hearing her sing certain lyrics. And so he was having um, just a personal party, uh, a backyard party for all of his friends and family. And he flew me and my husband out, put us up in a hotel, paid me very well. 
Um, and yeah, I just had the time of my life performing for him and I rewrote a few songs for his daughter and, um, yeah, it was really cool. So that, and, and then, yeah, being flown to Dallas for some vocal work, I've landed session vocals off of TikTok and I have like a donation link in my bio and, and donations do come in through that, which is nice. I feel like that's one thing is people are more, um, inclined to do like a cash app or a Venmo than to sign up for a whole Patreon is what I'm getting the sense of right now. But, you know, I could tweak things to make it more incentivized. Um, but donation links help. Um, a few brand deals here and there. Um, but yeah, that's the goal too, is to showcase my show a bit more too, maybe even start a new TikTok with it and try and get the word out mm -hmm. that way about things. And how do people, so when people find you on TikTok and they want to get in touch with you like that, do you, are you sending them to your website? Are you sending them to your email list? Like what, what is, how, how is that connection happening? Um, so if someone comes and wants to hire me through TikTok, um, they, they've always come through my email and told me that they found me on there. Cause I think the DM culture on there is just kind of crazy. It's, it's weird. It's, it's yeah. really weird. I don't yeah. really pay attention to my DMs. Though. Nobody like, does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think they know not to go there. So it usually comes in through my email, um, in my bio link, I have all the things in there, the different levels, like hire me for a live gig, join my Patreon, you know, things like that. So they usually come through there. Got it. Don't you find it weird though that like I feel like the DM culture on Instagram is so much more normal. Like you still get yeah. the weirdos, but like I get most of the DMs I get are actually people that I would want to DM with, whereas TikTok is just like all creepy people. I don't know. Yes. I don't know. I don't know what's up with that because the comments are great. Right. I don't get any, I get very aligned comments, but the DMs are kind of strange. <laughs> yes. It, it's funny. It, it, I guess every every platform has its weird quirks. Like I feel like for me, Facebook ads is where I get the really mean comments. Oh, and then, but not on Instagram. And then, like, uh, you know, DMs on Instagram are no, mostly normal people. And then TikTok is weird people. And I don't know, YouTube, I don't get mean comments on YouTube, just some weird people. But, you know, it's like every platform yeah. is so different and you wonder why it has that culture. Yes. Facebook for me is kind of dead. It's kind of coming around now with the reels. Yeah. Um, I had a few reels go viral because of other people. Mm -hmm. um, mine haven't, but they've used my sound and they've tagged me and, um, you know, people have come over from that. But I feel like that could be an opportunity. I am posting diligently to the reels from my TikToks. Nothing's happened yet. But <laughs> well, and that's an interesting uh, comment about the using people using your sound. Do you mm -hmm. get anything from that when someone uses your sound? It does, does that monetize for you at all? No, only if oh. they were to use my original upload. But in this case, the ones that went viral, they didn't know I was on there or something. So they uploaded it on their own accord. Oh, okay. I don't know that they can monetize it because it's not theirs, but it certainly doesn't send anything to me. Mm. <laughs> so, but when that one went viral is for the ABC song. Again, I saw a huge spike in streaming and downloads and all that kind of stuff. So it makes its way back around and my numbers go up everywhere. And so it's all right, I guess. Yeah, it does. I mean, people, <laughs> people do get curious enough that they start Googling and they start looking for you and things like that are, yeah. you know, but are you are monetizing, right? You're monetizing TikTok and YouTube and stuff to the, the point that you can monetize them. I am. Um, TikTok doesn't pay very much at all. YouTube pays pretty decently, but I I barely see anything from viral videos on TikTok, wow. their creator platform. Whereas YouTube, um, you know, I've gotten on a few playlists. Playlists is a thing on YouTube. I had a song go viral because it got put on a Christian playlist. And all of a sudden I saw like checks from YouTube for like 150, Whoa, 200. And I was like, what's going on here? And then I went and looked. I'm like, oh, so that could even be a marketing method is looking up popular playlists on YouTube and uh, getting your songs on there. Yeah, that's so um, interesting because I don't I've never like looked for someone else's playlist on YouTube. Me either. I me have my either. own, you know, but same. I guess make yours public because I don't know if they are, but people can get into your YouTube playlists if it's searchable. So I finally just started making some searchable ones like high vibe workout music because I have it for me. Music I, I like to listen to when I'm working out. Um, but yeah, people find it and then you put your own song in that mix of stuff, then it can 
Makes you sense. Know, it's similar to, you know, what you would do with Spotify or something like yeah. that. Have you gotten any on any Spotify playlists that have given you a big boost? Yeah, my um not Spotify, like the company itself, but on uh individual curators. I right. uh, went on TikTok, of course, and I typed in um like high vibe Spotify playlist or something along those lines. And I checked out a bunch of different people and I found one that had a huge playlist. And she's also very active on Instagram and I loved her content. I was like, oh, my song would be perfect. So I sent her a voice note on Instagram, you know, just letting her know that I loved everything she was doing. And she thought my song was a great fit. She put it on there and that thing skyrocketed. Mm. It just went nuts and pays me monthly to this day. And so, yeah, definitely organic, organically reaching out to people has been yeah. really helpful. I've never really done the submit hub. I've heard horror stories about it and I'm so niche, like in the high vibe, like crystals and sage world that I don't know if I could even fit into what they're doing over there. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. We use submit hub, su- hub submit hub some to get people for women of substance if I like mm. need to fill a few spots or whatever, there's so many good artists on there. Oh, you know, it's amazing. Good. So um, the question is, you know, how good are the curators? Obviously we, you know, as women of substance, we're putting you on a podcast, we're introducing you, all that stuff. Yeah. Um, other people may just be playlists. Now I do know Submit Hub is pretty good at okay. like, you know, making sure that people are legit. They vet people big time. Um, and they have all these, you know, ratings where artists can rate you based upon like what they received and things like that. So I do, I do think that Submit Hub is a good place to go, but you do okay. need to check out each one of them for yourself and not just assume yeah. that, you know, what they say is true <laughs> about their thing, you know, about yeah. their playlist. Yeah. I got kind of bitter about paid advertising after Facebook shut down my ads account right before I launched my Christmas marketing campaign that I spent so much time on like AB testing. I did a whole course that I paid for entrepreneur. It was all set up and ready to go. And then I hit the go button and it's, it just shut it down for some unknown reason. Never able to get it back. Wasn't able to screw that. Like forget Facebook and their ads. Like, and luckily TikTok was coming out and it it seemed to work really well for me over there. And so I just, I might consider more paid things. (laughs) I know you you haven't to do marketing. So you haven't dabbled in TikTok ads. I have not. I, I I did boost something once, but I did not like the results because you can't pick anything. It, That's the it, problem. I found yeah. that I tried it for a little bit and I found that it just doesn't pick the people that no. are niche enough for you. Yeah. In general. Yeah, definitely. But I don't know. For you, you know, high vibe music, that seems like it's a little more universal. Whereas yeah. for me, it was like, I need it to distinguish whether people are musicians because if they're not they're not going to care about my content (laughs) right it's interesting that they're very restricted over there um but even so yeah I tried boosting things before and I just didn't really like the results and and I did get a few negative comments through that process the Mm. only time I ever did so yeah I just said forget it I'll just uh, that's what'll happen with ads you'll always get negative comments because it's putting in front of people that they didn't ask for it so right Right. So I'm on the organic train right now. <laughs> Maybe well, one it day. seems to be working <laughs> for you. So that's good. <laughs> yeah. um, and as far as like, I know you mentioned Patreon a few times, you had a Patreon going. Do you still have a Patreon going? Like, how do you, how do you feel do. that has gone or what you might want to do to, you know, change it a little bit? Right. So my Patreon has been at the same number for, I want to say like two years maybe even more. Um, People leave and come and leave and come. I have someone there that have been on there the entire time I've had it. I've never wanted to get rid of it though. And I'll always sing its praises because even though I only have about 23 people on there, that's a nice little monthly check that I get because I have it based on um, creation, not on per month because then it incentivizes me to create more. Mm -hmm. So if I post four creations, I'll make more than if I only post one. And so I put my TikToks on there. So that's one way that I'm able to help myself keep putting those out there. So you're, I mean, um, I wouldn't say that's double dipping, but I mean, that that's a good double dipping, right? It's, yeah. It's incentivizing yeah, to you and. 
Right. Because it's they want to see it. That's what they want to see. So right. that's what they're paying for, essentially. So yeah, I put that. And then the behind the scenes content will be stuff like, you know, filming my rehearsals with my dancers or taking them on trips with me and, and behind the scenes stuff that they won't see anywhere else. So I do love Patreon. It has been stagnant, but that's through my own fault. <laughs> um, I, I need to get better at mentioning it at, you know, previously my Patreon link was at the bottom of my bio link. So I've moved it up. I've started prioritizing it. Um, I want to revamp it uh, because when I was traveling in the RV, it was set up a different way um, that I thought really worked for that audience. So I need to find what's really going to work for this new high vibe audience, whether it be, um, you know, I put some meditations in there or, um, you know, just something that they can get right when they land in there. Or if in my Facebook group, I have weekly you know, mental health challenges or or something, mm-hmm. something that won't take too much time, but that I'm doing already. You know, I do my affirmations in the morning. Maybe I go in the group and I do it with them or so I just need to I just need to get it together. <laughs> but I love Patreon. I think everybody should join. <laughs> yeah, no, not, I, not I mine love, in general. <laughs> yeah, no, I love Patreon, too. I wonder if even since you're doing it per creation, I wonder if even not calling it Patreon. You know what I mean? Because right. people think Patreon is a monthly thing because most people use it that way. Right. And I wonder if it would be more like, I don't know, the, you know, the supporters, you know, just some other name, like obviously it's yeah. still Patreon, but like just naming it something that would be more on brand and, and then it would right. just you know really get them behind. Like, you know, we are actually helping you create these videos. Right. Yeah, I really love that. I saw one other high vibe creator and she was calling it the Cosmic Lounge. She's uh, like, yeah. come join. Yeah. And they're like, oh, the co-. even I was like, what's that? And uh, I like, clicked on it. I'm like, oh, it's Patreon. It <laughs> so that's really clever. I'm glad you brought that up. I will do that. Awesome. <laughs> Next time yeah. we talk in six years, you'll see it's done. Right, yeah. right, right. <laughs> Well, I know that one thing we talked about last time we were together and um, that you're very passionate about is like, it's never too late age wise. Yes. And, you know, for me, since we've talked, like I was mid forties when we talked last time and now I'm 51. So, you know, Beautiful. and I'm still doing and it. I just right? turned 40. <laughs> oh my gosh. And I, you know, I didn't start my music career for reels until I was like 33 So there is absolutely no reason that anyone watching or listening cannot start a music career, especially you females who often feel like, oh, I have too many wrinkles to be on video and, you know, things like that. Um, You know, Audrey is like a really great example here. She she really blew up like would you say right around when you turn 40 or? Yeah, like 39 was the best year of my music career. (laughs) Yep. And it's only going up from there. And, um, you know, I I just connected with someone who's at later stages as well. And she is killing it. Such an inspiration for me. And she's on huge stages doing big things. And it's never too late. Um, despite what <laughs> I made it onto, you know, who Timberland, uh-huh. the uh, producer, I made it onto his, he does a live stream where he brings artists on and listens to their music and oh. gives them feedback or whatever. And so I made it onto his live stream and he pretty much told me that I was too old to be pursuing music. And yeah, like all this oh, stuff. Oh, Timberland, like, I used to like you. I know. And I was like, no, 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 no. And like basically laughing and like the whole audience in the feed was like pretty much in agreement with him because it's his little, you know, yes. minions. Um, but I did get a rush of females that came over to my page afterwards and were like, no, screw him and followed me just to spite him. And so That's there, cool. there is a big group of people out there. The majority, I would say, that do not care. And, you know, as you age, too, you start listening to old artists as well. Like, is a 50-year-old woman going to want to listen to the latest, like, 14-year-old's release talking about heartbreak? Are they going to want to listen to maybe, like, an Adele or someone who has, you know, a bit more experience behind them? So I think it's so important to release at all stages of life. Did you hear that? I think it was last year, a 91-year-old won their first Grammy for their first album. I didn't hear that. Yes, they had been writing music their whole lives, but didn't event like put it all together until that year. And then they campaigned for a Grammy and they actually won at like 91 years old. Wow. That is the cutest story ever. Yeah. So keep it up. (laughs) Yeah. And I would say even like older people on TikTok are a thing. Yes. There's not like as many, like I think 
older people, like my age people on TikTok, uh, you know, as, as spectators and stuff, but mm-hmm. there are some creators that are like super blowing up that are, you know, older. Yeah, you definitely, there's a, a high vibe creator. I love watching. He's gotta be like 65, maybe mm. pushing 70. He's got white crazy hair and just people just eat it up. I love it. <laughs> That's so cool. That's so and cool. yeah, even the, they have um like grandpas on there reading stories that people oh. will go on and just and are like sharing from their photo album and telling a story of the past. And people are like, thank you so much for showing up and doing this. It's like oh, the yeah. new history channel that they don't have to go, you know, to cable TV. It's a real person. Yeah, That's no, cool. I've seen grandmas on there giving like no nonsense advice and stuff like yeah. that. I love it. Yes. I think more than ever now, people can really believe in the fact that it's never too late to show up for your calling. Yes. Yes. Well, on that note, is there anything else that you, we haven't talked about that you want to say to our audience just to encourage them that to, you know, to keep going in their music career and like, you never know like where the twists and turns are going to take you. Right. Yeah. I would say to just not Be so serious throughout your career. When I started out, everything was like life or death. Oh my God, just really grasping, had to make it. And even now, sometimes I'll get down if if I'm like having a slump, but that very next day, something incredible can happen. And it happens all the time with me where I may disappear off TikTok and people have forgotten about me. Nobody's gonna care about this or that. And you get on and you have a viral hit. It just, Mm. and it's not even about the reality. More than anything, it's about you yourself expressing. If it's within you, you should let it out. You should write, you should sing, you should do your thing. And of course we all wanna monetize it and you can get to that, but no matter what, just, just release what's within you and just- one foot in front of the other, just make it, make it happen the best you can. And whatever is meant to happen will happen. I love it. Well, that is a great inspiration from the high vibe woman. (laughs) Um, So let them know where they can find you on TikTok, on Instagram, on YouTube, all the places. Yeah. So AudreyMusic.com is the hub for everything. All my links are on there. And in general, you can find me around online, uh, forward slash Audrey music. Like, um, my handle on TikTok is Audrey Callahan music. Um, but yeah, Audrey music.com I'd say would be the best. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. And I loved getting this update. It's been, I, know. I keep seeing you online. I keep going, I keep meaning to connect with her and, you know, yeah. I, I know you were in our, are in our community or we're in our community. Um, and so I was kind of like keeping in touch with you there. And then I was yeah. kind of following your TikTok. And so I had like a tangential idea of what was going on, but it's so great to get an update and just to use that as inspiration for everybody that's listening. Yeah. Yeah. Keep at it, everybody. You got it. (laughs) Thank you, Bree. Thanks for listening to The Profitable Musician Show. I would love to know your takeaways and aha moments from this episode. Leave me a comment over at ProfitableMusician.com so I can bring you more of the information, interviews, and resources that you love. Thanks to Rondi Fay, one of my Academy members, for providing the music for our podcast. You can check her out at rondifay.com. That's R-A-N-D-I-F-A-Y.com. Just remember, knowledge is power, but without implementation, it is useless. And inspiration without action is merely entertainment. But I know you're not just a dreamer, you are a doer. And I promise I'll be here every week to support you and remind you that you can be a profitable musician.